good afternoon everyone so in today's class we'll discuss about uh, the next module that is electrostatic boundary value problem and uh, conductors so first we'll be discussing about this conductors we'll see what are the properties of conductors right and then in the next class we'll go to this boundary value problem right so yeah going to the next slide So previous lecture uh, we discussed about the potential difference due to infinite line charge, potential due to uh, a charge drink and also we discussed about energy density, I forgot to mention it here. So we also discussed about energy density when we derived the equation also for WE that is Q1 half of Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 that, e that equation right and we solved one problem also based on that and we solved some problems based on uh, what to say uh, the potential difference due to point charge and the infinite line charge and we solve one problem on this energy density also right so now in today's lecture i mean yeah in this module uh, this is the syllabus what we have electrostatic boundary value problem and conductors so boundary conditions in dielectric, Poisson's law and Laplace law, actually this comes in the second part. So we will be discussing this in today's class. We will be discussing this. So just go through this one. So we have conductors, current and current density, conduction and convection, convection and continuity of current. So these topics we will discuss in today's class. Right. Yeah, we'll start with the first thing, uh, which is uh, convection and conduction currents. Conduction currents. So most of them, as an electrical engineer, will be familiar with conduction. When we go through the conduction current, you'll be understanding uh, why I told that. So first, we'll understand what is convection currents. So before going to any of this, that is convection or this conduction. We'll try to understand what do you mean by current first. What do you mean by current? So the current in amperes, the unit is amperes, through a given area is the electric charge passing through the area per unit time. So you all know that the current is given by dq by dt, where q will be in coulombs and t will be in seconds. Or you can also say that like how much charge is transferred in the given time is the current, right? So, the current of 1 ampere, the, char the charge is being transferred at a rate of 1 coulomb per second. 1 coulomb per second. So, if the charge of 1 coulomb is being transferred in 1 second, 1 second, then this current will be of 1 ampere. 1 ampere, right? Now, we'll move on to the current density. So, this is the definition of current. Now current density. Current density is simple. That is how much current is passing through the given surface, right? Normal to the surface. That is very important. So that is called current density J and it is denoted by J and it is a vector. You can see that it is bold. It is J vector. If the current delta I flows through a planar surface delta S, delta S, then the current density is given by simple. That is current density is given by current by unit surface how much current how much current is passing through the given surface right so now if this is a surface if this is a surface and if this is a current which is passing through this right and again we'll consider the same surface of same uh, what is the surface area and if there is less current right so this current density is more this current density is more compared to this one why because there is more current flowing through this given surface area and here it is less current flowing through the given surface area right so how much current is passing through how much surface is called 
current density that you should know and it has a direction because current flow in a particular direction so it is a vector it is a vector right so we'll move on to the next slide so as of now we have discussed what is current and what is current density right yes now we'll start with the first one as i told you here we have two types of currents one is convection and the other one is conduction so we are familiar with conduction you will understand when when we discuss that so now first we'll understand what is convection convection current now so that is the first case case a convection current so now usually what happens is whenever we speak about the current we think about the conductor because current can pass only through the conductor but in case of this convection current in in case of this convection current that is not the case because it doesn't need any conductors so you can read this convection current does not involve any does not involve conductors and consequently it doesn't satisfy ohm's law so convection current will not satisfy ohm's law this you have to note this is important right it occurs when the current flows through an insulating medium insulating medium such as liquid rarefied gas or vacuum right so this convection current doesn't require or will not flow through any uh, conductor it doesn't require any conductor so it can pass through some other medium other than the conductor such as insulating medium such as liquid rarefied gas or vacuum so as an example you can consider this vacuum tube vacuum tube a beam of electrons in vacuum tube as an example of a convection current convection current so now you see this figure here so what is there in this figure now we have some volume v here we have some volume v right so now this is a cross sectional area and it is taken as delta s it is taken as delta s and the current is flowing normal to this surface the current is flowing normal to this surface and that is given by this direction so now in which direction it is moving according to cartesian coordinate system it is moving in y direction it is moving in y direction right so now on the whole what, what what is the i mean the total charge present in this volume we can take it as rho v what is rho v rho v is nothing but charge per volume charge per volume so the char the total number of charges present as given by rho v here in the volume and this is the surface delta s and the current is flowing normal to this surface and remember that this is not a conductor it is a free space right so consider a filament so this is a filament if there is a flow of charge of density rho v as i told you rho v is given by q by v at a velocity u is equal to u y into a y why u y into a y because it is going in y direction right so this u is a vector this u is a vector so u vector will have the component of velocity in y direction the component of direction in y direction into a y cap into a y cap so that is what is written here right so flow of rho v now what you have to what you have to see here rho v is flowing at a velocity of u is equal to u y into a y u y because it is flowing in y direction so the current through the filament is the current through the filament how do you define current we saw in the previous slide current is equal to q by time charges per time which is nothing but rho v delta s delta y divided by delta t how did we get this now here i'll explain you now how can we write this delta q how can we write this delta q or in other words i can write q is equal to rho v into v correct and we have delta here we have delta here so i'll include delta v here right now delta v how can i write in terms of surface if i want to write delta v as a surface i can write this as delta s into delta y now this is how you understand here now this is a surface that is delta s right 
delta s now if i multiply this surface by this length it is nothing but it gives me this volume right so that is why delta v can be written as rho v into delta s into delta y so when you substitute all those here this is what you get that is delta q is substituted as rho v into delta s by delta v and delta t is written as it is here right so what do you get here now rho v into delta s and this is distance by time taken as you know it is velocity u y because it is in y direction so this do delta v by delta y by delta t is nothing but change of the i mean uh, distance per time so meters per second so that is nothing but velocity right so now going to the next slide <clears throat> yeah so the current density at any given point is the current through the unit normal unit normal area at that point so we have already discussed that the y directed current density jy is given by so jy is equal to delta i by delta s so this is delta i by delta s is nothing but the definition of current density jy now how do you, how did we get this rho v into uy here that is from the previous slide from here we can write it as rho v into uy right here we have i'll repeat again that is delta i will have rho v into u y that is from this equation so where is delta s i'll get that delta s below here that is delta s so what is delta by de delta i by delta s that is nothing but current density j and it is in y direction so it will be j y so j y is equal to delta by i by delta s which is nothing but rho v into u y right so that is what is written here rho v into ui so hence in general in general this we have taken in y direction for analysis this can be in any direction so j vector will be equal to rho v into u so this is important this is important so now as of now what we knew was j was only like current by surface now one more formula for j is rho v into rho v into the velocity in which it is moving that is u it can be in any direction based on that you have to include the direction for j also right so the current i is a convection current this i this current is a convection current and j is the convection current density in amperes per ampere per meter square ampere per meter square since it is i by s the unit for current is amperes and for surface area it is meter square so the unit for current density is ampere per meter square right so this is about convection convection current current so we'll revise once more so what all we discussed here convection current first we have to consider a volume which is not a conductor and it this volume has a current density of rho v so this rho v is moving at a velocity of u we'll take it as u y because it is in y direction and this length is delta y and this is the surface area delta s so when you multiply these two it will become delta v so delta i is equal to delta q by delta t so i explained you how this delta q can be written as rho v into delta s into delta y delta t will be as it is so it will be rho v into delta s into ui so the same equation we have written here so in general we can write j is equal to rho v into u right where u is velocity so we'll move to the next topic yes this is conduction current so now convection current whatever we discussed it did not require any it did not involve any conductor but here for conduction current we need a conductor right that is conduction current requires a requires a conductor so a conductor is characterized by large number of free electrons 
we all know this from physics that is a conductor will have lot of free electrons in it that provide conduction current due to the impressed electric field so whenever you apply whenever you apply electric field to the conductor whenever you apply the electric field to the conductor the free electrons in the conductor will start moving in the direction of electric field that we'll see later so uh, an electric field <coughs> uh, e is applied the force the force on the electron with the charge minus e is given by f is equal to minus e into minus e is the charge on electron and e is the electric field intensity so the force is given by the force is given by f is equal to minus e into electric field intensity right now moreover how can we write this can i write it like this f is equal to q into e and from the definition itself we know that is electric field intensity is nothing but charge i mean force experienced per force experienced per unit charge right and here what is charge on each electron it is minus e so i'll replace q by minus e i'll get minus e into minus e into e vector that is min that is e so f is equal to minus e into e so that is the equation what is written here right now since the electron since the electron is not in the free space yes it is not in the free space because a conductor is confined to its own shape so everything will be inside the conductor it will not experience an average acceleration under the influence of electric field what it means is as soon as you apply the electric field the electrons will not jump out of the conductor right rather it suffers a constant collisions with the atomic lattice and drifts from one atom to the other right within the conductor when you apply the electric field the electron starts moving and there will be constant collisions by within their neighbor uh, electrons right so if an electron with mass m is moving in moving in an electric field e with an average drift velocity of u according to newton's law the average change in momentum of free electron must match the applied force hence so i'll write it like this so the force applied should be equal to or the force applied force should be equal to m m is mass of the electron and u is the velocity so mass into velocity divided by the average time so this tau is the average time interval between the collisions which should be equal to this one that is minus e into e right so f should be equal to mass into velocity divided by the time is equal to is equal to minus e into e vector now from this equation if i want only the velocity how can i get so tau will go up and m will come down m will come down cross multiply this one so we we'll get we we'll get this equation for u that is velocity so u is given by minus e into tau divided by m into electric field intensity e right where tau is the average time interval between the collisions this indicates that the drift velocity of the electron is directly proportional to the applied field right here you can see that drift velocity that is u is directly proportional to the applied field that is this one so that is u drift velocity is directly proportional to e that is electric field intensity so if there are n charges n free electrons per unit volume the electronic charge density is given by so if there are n number of charges the charge on one electron is minus e if there are n number of charges then it will become minus n into e which is nothing but rho v that is charge density so the total number of electrons is is given by minus n into e in the given for the given region for the given region right so rho v can be written as minus n into e so going to the next slide yeah 
Thus, the conduction current density is J is equal to rho V into U. How did we get this from here? One second. Yeah. J is equal to rho V into U. That is from this derivation. J is equal to rho V into U. The same equation is written here. Now, what is, what is rho V? Rho V is given by minus N into E. Correct. Minus N into E. And U is given by U is given by minus E tau by M into E. So, when you multiply these two, what happens? Minus into minus will become plus N E square tau by M into E. So, that is what we have got here. That is what we have got here, right? Now, this, that is, one second, yeah, one second, uh, yeah. Now, this part, I will take this as conductivity sigma conductivity sigma so it can be written as rho v yeah it can be written as rho v into u which is n e square tau by m into e that is electric field intensity so this part i'll take it as sigma that is conductivity so we will get this equation sigma into e so now how can we write j is equal to sigma into sigma into e so this sigma is only when we have a conductor there only then we can we can define conductivity right so what did we get from uh, convection current density j is equal to rho v into u rho v into u and from conduction we got j is equal to sigma e applied electric field right correct yeah, rho v into u and here j is equal to sigma e so these two formulas you have to remember right so this is important this j is equal to sigma e is known as point form of ohm's law point form of ohm's law right now yes starting with the conductors now we have we have discussed two things here we started with conduction and convection and conduction currents so we have discussed what is convection current and what is conduction current conduction current now we'll we'll start with the conductors right so what happens here a conductor has an abundance of charge that is free to move that is free to move when does it move only when they have when when we when we apply some up, up, when we apply some external electric field the free electrons inside the conductor will move right so consider an isolated conductor shown in the figure so you have to understand what is isolated conductor isolated conductor means we'll just give some electric field and we'll remove the electric field right the electric field will not be continuously given to this isolated conductor that is the meaning right now consider this figure where consider this figure where you have, you have we have applied some electric field and we have removed it that is this electric field we have applied in this direction to this conductor isolated conductor so what is figure a an isolated conductor under the influence of applied field applied field right now when an external when an external electric field e e so this e suffix e this this e represents external so uh, external electric field applied to this isolated conductor then the positive free charges are pushed along the same direction as the applied field so you can see here we are applying the electric field in this direction so the positive field is also accumulated in the direction where we are applying the electric field right while the negative free charges move to the opposite direction exactly that is like this so negative will be to, towards the other side 
right positive will get will be accumulated towards the applied electric field and negative to the other side of the conductor other side of the conductor then this charge migration takes place very quickly right what does it mean now here when when we speak about the conductor which is which, which we have not subjected to any electric field these charges will be randomly placed that is negative i mean uh, negative charges and positive charges will be randomly placed so as soon as we apply the electric field these arrangements takes place that is that is the plus sign the positive charges will get accumulated towards i mean in the direction of the applied electric field and electrons that is negative charges will get accumulated to the, towards the other side so before everything were inside the conductor or yeah inside the conductor now what happens as soon as you apply the electric field all the charges will get accumulated to the sides as as i said before right based on the applied electric field so that changes takes place very quickly so the free charges do two things here the free charges do two things here firstly they accumulate on the surface of the conductor which we discussed just now that is firstly what happens as soon as you apply the electric fields whatever whatever uh, charges were there inside the conductor will get accumulated according to the direction of the electric field on the surface that is this is the surface surface of the conductor so positive charges will get accumulated here and negative charges will get accumulated here right that is the meaning and then second thing is so what happens here as soon as they accumulate here positive and negative charges so there will be some some electric field developed due to this accumulation when when you have positive charges here and negative charges here there will be some internal induced voltage developed so that is ei that is internal electric field intensity which is developed due to this charge difference on the surfaces now what happens here is these in this internal electric field intensity will be opposite to the direction of applied electric field so these two that is ee and ei will be in opposite direction to each other so what happens is within the conductor the effect of this electric field and the induced electric field will cancel out each other will cancel out each other so inside the conductor you will not have any electric field inside the inside the conductor you will not have any electric field because the induced electric field will cancel out will cancel the applied electric field why you got this internal uh, electric field because the accumulation of this charges on the two surfaces so when when two sub, when two charges are separated by some distance we know that always there will be some electric field so that is internal electric field intensity which cancels the external electric electric field intensity inside the conductor inside the conductor so now you can see that rho v is equal to 0 rho by rho v is equal to 0 earlier before applying the charge all the charges were placed inside so then we can tell that rho v is not equal to 0 there are some charges inside the conductor right now as soon as you apply some electric field we know that quickly the charges get accumulated on the surface based on the direction of the applied electric field so as soon as they get accumulated on the surfaces right there will be some electric field internal electric field so which will oppose the external electric field and within the conductor the electric field intensity will be zero this is one of the very important property of the conductor so now just read this one so second the charges induced set up an internal induced field ei which cancels the external applied electric field e e e this results this result is illustrated in the figure that is this one as i showed this leads to an important property of the conductor so all these you have to explain when you are asked to explain about the conductor right now we'll move to the next slide yes so a perfect conductor the conductivity has to be infinity the conductivity has to be infinity and 
cannot contain an electric field within it. So as we seen here, for a conductor, the electric field should be zero inside the conductor, and the conductivity sigma should be infinity. Should be infinity, right? A conductor is called equipotential body, implying that the potential is same everywhere in the conductor, right? So that is. Now here you can see that it is equipotential that there is no charges inside. So from this from this point to this point, from this point to this point, when you measure, or from this point to this point you measure, everything will be the same. The value of potential will be the same. So that is why this is called equipotential. So inside the conductor, always it should be equipotential. If there are some charges inside, even after applying the charge, then this potential will not be called as equipotential, right? So for the pure for a pure conductor, it should have equipotential. A conductor is called equipotential body, implying that the potential is same everywhere in the conductor. This is based on the fact that E is equal to minus gradient of V is equal to zero. Just now we saw that for a pure conductor, this electric field intensity is zero. And in the second module, we have also seen that. The electric field intensity E vector is minus gradient of V, minus gradient of V, which should be zero, which should be zero, according to this concept what we discussed, right? Now, the gradient of V also should should be zero. What is gradient? It is change in uh, the potential. So there should not be any change in potential. That is why it is called equipotential body. Equipotential body, right? Since E is equal to zero, gradient of V also should be zero. Hence, it should be a equipotential body. That is when we call that body as a conductor. Now, another way of looking at this is this. This is just the explanation. Now, with, this is with respect to the uh, uh, mathematics, right? Explanation. Ohm's law. So, Ohm's law. We have seen that. Where is Ohm's law? This one. So take this equation. J is equal to sigma e. So J is equal to sigma e. Now J we cannot tell it is zero or it is infinity. It should have some specific value, right? It is current per surface area. We cannot come. We cannot tell that J should be zero or J should be infinite. It should have some finite value, right? And for a pure conductor, this sigma should be infinity. Sigma should be infinity. Now, if you want to say this J to be constant and sigma is infinity, this E has to be zero. This E has to be zero. That is what is told here. To maintain a finite current density J in a perfect conductor, as sigma tends to infinity, requires that the electric field inside the conductor sigma is equal to infinity vanish. In this, in the other words, E tends to zero because sigma tends to infinity. Right? In a in a perfect conductor, in a perfect conductor, if some charges are introduced in the interior of such a conductor, the charges will move to the surface and redistribute themselves quickly in such a manner that the field inside the conductor vanishes. The same thing what we discussed for the conductors, right? So what happens here? I'll explain it here. The same thing here. What what I told you that is. So we had a conductor here. We had a conductor here, and uh, charges were uh, placed. Uh, uh, I mean, as it is, as soon as we apply the electric field, the charges gets accumulated on the surface of the conductor, as I explained, right? And due to that, what happens? An internal uh, electric field intensity is developed, which cancels the effect of external electric field. And inside the conductor, there will be no electric field. That is what is told here. In such a manner that redistribute quickly. In such a manner that the field inside the conductor vanishes. According to Gauss law, if E is equal to zero, the charge density rho v must be zero. How can we define this? We know that E into epsilon E into epsilon is d. So if E is zero, this d also has to be zero, right? So, if d is zero, we know that divergence of d vector is equal to rho v, rho v. So this rho v also has to be zero. 
So we conclude again that the perfect conductor cannot contain the electrostatic field within it under static conditions. So these are some of the characteristics of a perfect conductor. These are some of the characteristics of a perfect conductor. First thing is rho v will become zero because of that uh, separation of charges when we apply electric field and within the conductor electric field intensity will be zero. Since electric field intensity will be zero from this equation that is E is equal to gradient of V the potential difference also will be zero inside the conductor. Inside the conductor is important here you have to note that. So where VEIB is a potential difference between point C and B in the conductor as when there are no charges then obviously the potential difference between VEIB will be zero and one more thing is it is equipotential body inside inside the conductor so VAB will be equal to zero. I hope you are uh, understanding. Now going to the next slide. Yes. Now whatever we have considered until now is an isolated uh, conductor. Isol what, 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 what do you mean by isolated conductor? We apply the electric field and we leave. We'll, we'll not will not continuously apply the electric field. But here we are taking an example of a conductor. We are taking an example of a conductor here, which is always connected to this source. Right. Now what happens is now inside this conductor, rho v will not be equal to zero. That is charge density will not be zero when we apply the electric field to it. Right. So we'll see how it is. Now we consider a, con a conductor whose ends are maintained at a potential difference V as I told you. Note that in this case E is not equal to zero inside the conductors because due to this potential difference the charges will always be flowing through this conductor always. So there will be some electric field inside, inside the conductor so E will not be equal to zero inside the conductor as a figure as in the figure. So what is the difference? There is no static equilibrium in the figure since the conductor is not isolated as I told you it is not isolated but it is connected to the source. So always there will be movement of charges within the conductor. When there are movements of within the conductor there will be some electric field E. Right. So which compels the free charges to move and prevents the eventual establishment of electrostatic equilibrium. So electrostatic equilibrium will not be there right thus in the in, in case of the figure an electric field must exist inside the conductor to sustain the flow of current to sustain the flow of current as the electrons move they encounter some damping forces called resistance this is an important term here so what happened here first thing we took a conductor which will have free electrons in that we applied electric field when we apply electric field flow of electrons will be there throughout the conductor so E will not be equal to zero. When there is flow of electrons there will be some damping forces acting on those that flow which is called as resistance which is called as resistance. So based on Ohm's law we will derive the resistance for conducting material. Suppose the conductor has a uniform cross section area yes now so it has a uniform cross section S yes, and the length of the conductor is L. Length of the conductor is L. The direction of the electric field produced in the same direction of positive currents I that is known. Now always the positive charge will move in this direction. That is same as electric field intensity and electrons will move in the negative direction. Which is already shown in the figure here. Right. So this direction is opposite to the direction of flow of electrons. The electric field applied is uniform and its magnitude is given by. So electric field is given by E is equal to V by L. We know that electric field intensity unit is volt per meter. Right. So it is nothing but V by L. Since the conductor has uniform cross section, I can write the current density as current by surface. Definition, basic definition of current density. How much current is passing through? The given surface i by s. Now substituting the equations, what we are doing it, what we are doing here. So this i by s is nothing but j, j, and j is equal to sigma e from Ohm's law. J is equal to sigma e from Ohm's law, and this e is equal to v by l. This e is equal to v by l from this equation, right? 
I hope you understood the substitution. Now here, hence R is equal to V by I. R is equal to V by I, which is equal to L by rho S. How did we get this? Now R is V by I. V here, uh, take these two equations. That is this I by S and rho V by L. So I'll write it separately here. That is I by S is equal to rho v by l so if i want v by i if i want v by i so l will be on the top and v by i l will be on the top and sigma and s will be down from that equation so that is what is written here and what is v by i v by i is nothing but the resistance r v by i is nothing but the resistance r right now this is on this holds good only when the conductor size is uniform right if it has non-uniform cross section then you have to use this formula so we know that from the potential difference when we discuss the potential uh, uh, this thing difference we got E, e vector dot dl vector divided by i is nothing but this sigma into e is j dot ds so we can write current also as i is equal to i is equal to j into s so if we have differential current di and ds so if to eliminate i, I mean to eliminate the differentiation, differentiation I'll, I have to integrate. So this will be i into integral of j into ds. So what is j? It is sigma e from Ohm's law and ds will be written as it is. So that is what is written here. I hope you have understood. So we'll go to the next slide. So we'll denote, we'll, uh, de we'll derive the equation for power P in watts, which is denoted by force into velocity, force into velocity, power is equal to force into velocity. Now P is equal to, how did we get this rho V into dV into E for force? So I'll write it here. We can take it, we can take P is equal to volume integral of force into velocity how can i write force in terms of electric field intensity force is equal to so this volume integral will be there into f into u is nothing but f is nothing but e into q e into q and this velocity will be as it is right now how can i write q q can be written as with respect to volume that is Q, Q I'll write it as rho V into dV. So this Q I'm writing it as rho V into dV. Now what is left? That is E into U. E into U. So that is this equation. Right. Now which is equal to E dot rho V just rearranging this equation rearranging this equation we get this one so p is equal to so this is nothing but j vector this is nothing but j vector so we get e vector into j vector into dv which is known as joule's law so this is important joule's law now p is equal to this is for uh, uneven cross section or this can also be written as now this volume integral this volume integral can be written as length into surface length into surface so for e it will be length and for j it will be surface so this above equation can be written like this also so where e into dl from second module it is called v j into ds is nothing but i so power is equal to v into i right or v we can write it as i by r from the previous derivation so p also can be written as p is equal to i square r right yes now
going to the next slide yeah continuity equation and relaxation time right now from the principle of charge conservation the time rate of decrease of charge within a given volume must be equal to the net outward flow through the surface through the surface of the volume thus the current i out coming out of the closed surface is i out is equal to closed integral of j vector dot ds vector which is equal to minus dq in by dt so this is from conservation of charge what does it mean suppose when we have a conductor like this which we discussed earlier so there will be charges inside this conductor right now when this is connected to a potential or when there is when the potential difference is applied to this particular conductor the time rate of decrease of charge within a given volume so what happens when when i pass the current here obviously the charges here has to come out through this other point so the rate at which the volume charge density is decreasing inside as soon as these charges come out through this wire some other charges has to flow inside the conductor so this rate should be equal this rate should be equal so now read this within a given volume must be equal to the net outward current flow through the surface that is whatever decrease is there in this rho v that is charge density should be equal to the outward flow of the current from this conductor correct both has to be same both has to be same so if i out is the current which is coming out so this is i out so if i out is a current which is coming out so i out should be equal to closed integral of j vector dot ds vector which is equal to minus dq in by dt why minus dq in by dt because the charges are getting over here right dk so that is why minus sign now where q in is a total charge enclosed by the closed surface closed surface invoking the divergence theorem we write now can we apply divergence theorem here what was divergence theorem if you remember we have closed integral of d vector dot ds vector is equal to volume integral of divergence of d vector into dv right so so instead of d vector if i write j vector we'll get this equation we'll get this equation so now substituting this here now how can we write so minus dq in by dt that is this equation can be written as d by dt of this q in this q in can be written as rho v into dv rho v into dv which is nothing but minus taking this differentiation inside it will become partial derivative so rho v do rho v by do t into dv right now how did we get this equation we got this equation starting with this minus dq in by dt what is dq in by dt it is nothing but this divergence equation so i am writing this divergence equation is equal to whatever we have got here i am writing the same equation here so divergence of j vector is equal to minus do rho v by do t dv and dv will get cancelled integrals also will get cancelled will get divergence of j vector is equal to minus do rho v by do t which is called the continuity of current equation or just continuity equation so derive continuity equation means you have to answer this in detail right this is called continuity equation so that is what we started with continuity equation and we have to 
go further to this relaxation time next now for steady state currents do rho v by dot t is equal to 0 so change in rho v with respect to dot t should be 0 for steady currents and hence divergence of j vector also will be 0 showing that the total charge leaving the volume is same as the total charge entering it so Kirchhoff's current law follows from this one so from Ohm's law what we have j is equal to conductivity into e vector that is rho into sorry sigma into e so here how did we get this equation how did we get this equation here now what is divergence of d vector divergence of d vector is nothing but rho v divergence of d vector is nothing but rho v and what is d vector with respect to e vector so it will become divergence of epsilon e vector is equal to rho v so cross multiplying epsilon we get divergence of e vector is equal to rho v by epsilon so that is uh, that is how we got this d equation right now what is e vector sorry multiplying this sigma on both the sides here so sigma is multiplied here as well as here so sigma is multiplied on both the sides we get sigma into rho v by epsilon now this sigma into e is nothing but j vector so this is nothing but divergence of j vector divergence of j vector is equal to this equation so this divergence of j vector is nothing but from the previous equation we have divergence of j vector is nothing but do rho v by do t so that is written here that is written here now adding this one what do we get that is these two so taking this to the other side it will become plus and is equal to zero so this is a homogeneous linear ordinary differential equation by separating the variables you get rho v do rho v by rho v is equal to minus sigma by epsilon into do t so this is using some mathematical operations they have obtained this one so going to the next slide so in taking integration on both the sides so applying some mathematical formulas here we get rho v is equal to rho v naught into e power minus t by tr where tr is equal to epsilon by sigma so this tr is called relaxation time so what was the derivation we were doing we were doing it for continuity equation and relaxation time so relaxation time is given by epsilon by sigma right where rho v naught is the initial charge density that is rho v at t is equal to zero so the time constant tr is known as relaxation time or rearrangement time now we'll understand what is this relaxation time so the equa the equation shows that the introduction of charge at some interior part of the material results in decay of volume charge density rho v associated with decay is the charge movement from interior point at which it was introduced to the surface of the material this time tr is known as relaxation time or rearrangement time so to explain this sentence whatever i read now i'll make use of this diagram i'll make use of this diagram now how did we explain this one how did we see this one now all the charges will be randomly placed within the conductor within the conductor when there was no electric field applied correct now as soon as you apply the electric field in one of the direction these charges plus and minus right whatever charges are there in this metal or this conductor will get will start getting accumulated will start getting accumulated on the surface so positive positive charges on this side and negative charges on the other side so positive will get accumulated here and negative charges will get accumulated here again negative this side and positive this side so until you apply the electric field 
rho v was not equal to 0 rho v was not equal to 0 so this charge density there was some charge density in the volume in this particular conductor so and as soon as you apply this electric field intensity or electric field to this conductor what happened based on the direction in which you applied the electric field the charges got accumulated accumulated on the surface of the conductors surface of the conductor right so now how much time took by the charges how much time took by the charges to move from their positions to the surface after introduction of this electric field is called relaxation time i'll repeat again whatever charges are there will be randomly distributed in the conductor before applying the electric field so as soon as you apply the electric field the positive and negative charges separately will get accumulated on the surfaces based on the direction of electric field applied so the time required by the charges to move from their respective positions to the surfaces surfaces based on the electric field applied right the time required for this that is the time required for the charges to settle down on the surfaces after the introduction of electric field intensity is called relaxation time right so that is called relaxation time now if you read this you will understand just go through this one the equation shows that the introduction of charge introduction of charge is nothing but applying of electric field at some interior part of the material results in decay in volume charge density rho v associated with the decay in the charge movement from the interior point at which it was introduced to the surface of the material the time constant tr is known as relaxation time or rearrangement time right so this is a definition of relaxation time you can write this or this one relaxation is relaxation relaxation time is the time it takes a charge placed in the interior of the material to drop to e power minus 1 that is exponential inverse that is 36.8 percent of its initial value right so now we'll consider two examples to calculate the relaxation time right one is for the good conductor the second one is for good dielectrics now you know that for the good conductor the time required should be very less because as soon as you apply the as soon as you apply the electric field the charges should immediately come i mean uh, get accumulated to the surface right so so that electric field is equal to zero that is what we have seen that is for a pure conductor for a pure conductor For a pure conductor, this e, e vector should be zero, right? Why it should be zero? Because as soon as you apply the charges, the charges get accumulated. So the internal electric field and the external electric field get cancelled. So inside the conductor, this e vector will be e vector should be zero, right? So the time required to make that e vector zero after the applying after the application of electric field, right, should be very less for for good conductors. Now you know that. One of the good conductors is copper, right? Copper is a very good conductor. So we know that, I mean, uh, uh, from uh, the conductivity value of the copper, we have conductivity of copper is 5.8 into 10 to the power 7 Siemens per uh, meter and epsilon R is equal to 1. And TR is equal to TR. What is TR? That is this relaxation time. TR is equal to sigma by epsilon so epsilon r epsilon not divided by sigma which is equal to substituting the values that's all just substitute the values you will get 1.53 into 10 to the power minus 19 seconds just see the value here it is very very quick so as soon as you apply the electric field for a copper for e vector inside the conductor to become zero it takes only it takes only 1.53 into 10 to the power minus 19 seconds so it is very very less time right similarly we'll see for a uh, other uh, dielectric so now for dielectric you consider this as an example that is fused quartz so for that the conductivity is 10 to the power minus 19 siemens per meter and epsilon r is 5 right so it needs 51 point Two days 51.2 days for all the charges inside the volume to get accumulated on the surface 
right so that is the difference between that is that is the importance of knowing the relaxation time so relaxation time is how much time the charge needs to get accumulated on the surface as soon as the electric field is applied to that right so it is a very large relaxation time for insulators right so for good dielectrics one may consider the introduction of charge to remain wherever placed for time times up to days so because it is 51.2 days i hope you understood what is relaxation time right so now we'll continue this from the next class that is boundary conditions so there are three types of boundary conditions one is dielectric to dielectric boundary condition conductor to dielectric boundary condition conductor to free space boundary condition condition so this will 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 continue in the next lecture thank you